So we are going to continue our lesson on linear iteration methods and specifically in this lesson, we are going to discuss the Gossaido iteration method, which is basically an improvisation of the Jacobi iteration method we studied in the previous lessons. Now one would like to choose Gossaido iteration method over Jacobi iteration method simply because of the convergence speed. Now what happens is that for Gossaido iteration method, each variable is updated as soon as a new value is available. Each variable is updated as soon as a new value is available. And this leads to faster convergence. And that is exactly what we are going to do in today's lesson. Now, we also need to understand this fact that Gossaido iteration method does not guarantee convergence at all times. Like we already know in the previous lessons, if the system is diagonally dominant, the word means is that we are going to have a higher chance that the system is going to converge. That is, the approximations are going to converge to the exact solution. However, if the system is not diagonally dominant, then the system may either converge or may not converge at all. So let's take notice of this important fact. Now we have a question here. We are asked to solve the system of equations using Gossaido iteration method with initial guess x of 0 equals 0, 0, 0. And then we are asked to perform only two iterations. So we have this to be the system of equations. Let's try our hands on it. So first of all, we are going to pull out the coefficient matrix from this system of equations so that we check if this system is diagonally dominant or not. So we have the coefficient matrix A, which has components. We are going to input the coefficients of x1, x2, x3 in here. So here we have 45, 2, 3. For the next row, we have negative 3, 22, 2. And the last row, we have 5, 1, 20. Now, this coefficient matrix A is said to be diagonally dominant if and only if for each row, the absolute value of the diagonal elements, these are the diagonal elements. So for each row, if the absolute value of the diagonal elements are greater than or equal to the sum of the absolute values of the remaining elements in the row, then we say that this matrix is a diagonally dominant matrix. So we consider the first row, we have the absolute value of the diagonal element is 45. So 45 is greater than or equal to absolute value of 2 is 2 plus absolute value of 3 is 3. So this is correct. So we are good for the first row. Let's move on to the second row. We have the absolute value of the diagonal element that is 22. And this we say is greater than or equal to absolute value of negative 3. That is 3. Absolute value of 2 is 2. This is also true. Now we move on to the third row. We have the absolute value of the diagonal element, that is 20. And we say that this is greater than or equal to absolute value of 5, which is 5, plus absolute value of 1, which is also 1. This is also true. Hence, this matrix is a diagonally dominant one. And hence, this system is also diagonally dominant. So it gives a level of assurance that this system is going to converge or the approximations are going to converge to the exact solution. Now let's proceed with the solution. So the next thing is we are going to make x1, x2, x3 the subject from equations 1, 2, and 3 respectively. So we consider the first equation. We are going to make x1 the subject. So x1 is basically equal to we have 58 minus 2x2 minus 3x3 all divided by the coefficient of x1 which is 45 we move on to x2 for equation 2 here also we have 47 now this is negative so it becomes positive so plus 3 x1 and then minus 2 x3 all divided by coefficient of x2 that is 22 we move on to x3 for equation 3 we also have 67 minus 5x1 minus x2 all divided by 20. Now on the left hand side we are going to have xi of k values. So we have x1 of k, x2 of k, x3 of k. 
on the right hand side here we have x2 of k minus 1 x3 of k minus 1 here we have x1 of k and i'm going to explain that later in this video and then here also we have x3 of k minus 1 and then lastly we have x1 of k and then x2 of k so we have an initial guess initial guess giving us we have x of 0 and this is equal to x1 of 0 x2 of 0 x3 of 0 and that is equal to 0 0 0 so we can start with the first iteration step so considering the first iteration step we know k is equal to 1 so let me just put that here k is equal to 1 so if k is equal to 1 that means that first of all we are going to find x1 of 1 and that is equal to so here we have 58 minus 2 times this becomes x2 of 0 okay 1 minus 1 is 0 so x2 of 0 so we have x2 of 0 to be 0 minus 3 x3 of 0 that is also 0 from here so we have this all divided by 45 and then this is giving us 1.28889 so we try to leave our answer to six significant figures so this is the value of x1 of 1 next we move on to x2 of 1 and that is simply equal to so from here we have 47 plus 3 times here we have x1 of k now what happens here is that for Gossidal iteration method we always update with the recent value of a particular variable we are looking out for so for instance here we have x1 so we need to update that when we want to find x2 of 1 we need to update with the recent or the most recent value of x1 now the most recent value of x1 is what we found here initially we were given x1 of 0 to be 0 that is what we started with now from this step we are able to find x1 of 1 which is the new or the recent value of x1 so we are not going to use this value again which is 0 we are going to use the most recent value of x1 now the most recent value of x1 is what we have as 1.28889 so instead of putting 0 here we are going to put 1.28889 so we realize that this value is the value for x1 of 1 and that is what we have here so for the first iteration step k is equal to 1 so this becomes x1 of 1 now the basic idea is that we are always going to update with the recent value of a particular variable so long as it is available so that is the basic idea so after this we have minus 2 times x3 of 0 okay x3 of 0 the most recent value of x3 is still 0 so we just put that here and then we divide this all by 22 and then we are going to get 2.31212 so this is the value of x2 of 1 now let's move on to x3 of 1 so for x3 of 1 that's going to be 67 minus 5 times x1 of k so here we are going to put in the most recent value of x1 which is what we have as 1.28889 minus x2 of k that is the most recent value of x2 which is what we have here so minus 2.31212 we divide this all by 20 and then we have 2.31212 one seven 
2.91217 so at the end of the first iteration step at the end of the first iteration step we have x of 1 which is equal to x1 of 1 x2 of 1 x3 of 1 to be equal to 1.28889 2.31212 and then 2.91217 so next let's move on to the second iteration step so for the second iteration step that is where we have k to be equal to 2 so for k equals 2 we have the first item to be x1 of 2 that is equal to so we have 58 minus 2 times this is x2 now the most recent value of x2 is this value so that is 2.2.31217 and then minus 3x3 so minus 3x3 the most recent value of x3 is this 2.91217 we divide this or by 45 and you realize that when you compute this then you are going to have 0 0.991983 Now let's move on to x2 of 2 that is also equal to so here we have 47 plus 3 times so here we have x1 so the most recent value of x1 becomes this one not that one okay it becomes this one so that is 0 0.9 one nine eight three and then minus two x three okay minus two x three most recent value of x three is still this one so two point nine one two one seven divide all of this by twenty two and so you have divided by 22 and then that is equal to 2.00689 2.00689 now we move on to x3 of 2 and that is simply equal to we have 67 minus 5 times most recent value of x1 okay most recent value of x1 that is what we have here 0 0.991983 so 0 0.991983 and then minus x2 so we fish out for the most recent value of x2 and that is this so minus 2.00 689 or divided by 20 and then we have this also to be equal to 3.00166 so at the end of the second iteration step we have x of 2 to be equal to x1 of 2 let me write it well x1 of 2 x2 of 2 x3 of 2 to be equal to we have 0 0.9919832.006893.000166 0 